all-new Dr. Phil. My dad has been faking illnesses. He claims he has liver cancer. 100 heart attacks. Is he lying to his family? Are you a con man? No, sir. Which doctor said you had six months to live? This was in the ER. I have that ER record, and he did not write that down. That the hospital scares me. The one you go to twice a day sometimes? You've called 911 more than people call Domino's Pizza. Let's do it. Not a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. Today is going to be a changing day in your life. Up on you. Well, Carl is a former firefighter, EMT, who now claims to be in the fight of his life due to a long list of very serious health issues, including a dead liver from liver cancer and multiple heart attacks just this year. But there's just one hitch. All three of his daughters say their dad is a master manipulator, a liar, has extreme Munchausen's, and is not as sick as he pretends. His sister Terry also believes her brother is faking illnesses for attention, and it's hitting her niece, Hillary, the hardest. Terry says Carl went from being everyone's favorite to almost destroying the family with all of this nonsense. Take a look. Carl's constantly lying about his illnesses. It's a strong possibility that Carl has Munchausen syndrome. Carl claims he has kidney cancer, bladder cancer, liver cancer. Carl did say that he had kidney failure. He's claimed that he's had seven or eight massive heart attacks. Two last week. I'm having chest pains right now. I think this year he was probably calling 911 once, twice a week. Carl's claimed that he's needed triple and quadruple bypass surgeries, and that's not true. When he tells me that he had a heart attack and he's walking out of the hospital within an hour, that's a lie. Carl's told me multiple times that he's dying. Carl takes insulin for his diabetes. I have to stick myself either injections or checking my blood sugar at least 25 times a day with a needle. But Carl also drinks 10, 12 or more Pepsis a day. Why are you smoking? Why are you drinking these Pepsis? Why don't you do something to extend your life for your children? And it's like I'm talking to a brick wall. Carl takes a lot of different pills every day. Blood pressure medication, medication for his diabetes, high blood pressure. Carl posts a lot of pitiful, poor me posts on Facebook. Carl's relationship with his daughters is very strained. Everyone basically is done with Carl. Over the years, I've given Carl tens of thousands of dollars. Carl called me and told me last month that he hadn't eaten in like 20 days. I didn't believe that at all. If you don't eat for 20 days, you're not gonna be alive. I don't give Carl money anymore. He's a manipulative, self-centered person and he has no feelings for what he does to anyone else. Well, you don't have to guess where she stands. Carl's daughter, Hillary, says her dad harasses her nonstop about his health problems and fake illnesses, and she just can't take it anymore. Take a look. My dad is a very good manipulator, con artist, and liar. My dad has been faking illnesses for 18 years. My father keeps himself sick on purpose. My dad takes an extraordinary amount of medication every single day. Selexa, Isisorbide, Whip, Carvinaldol, Zantac, Seroquel. You know, I really can't remember what they give it to me for. I do believe my father has Munchausen syndrome. Like he'll eat a pack of gum and then call the ambulance because his blood sugar is high. My dad calls 911 sometimes six times a week. I believe my father's been in the emergency room at least 200 times in the last year. He has shut out everyone except for me simply because everyone else has given up dealing with him. I am the last person that puts up with his <laughs> My dad will start calling my phone six o'clock in the morning and if I don't answer he'll call and call and when I answer it he's begging me for something whether it be money, Xanax, food, cigarettes, anything. When I cannot provide it he starts cussing at me. This is ridiculous. I'm very sick of it. He has called me multiple times telling me he was dying, that he had like three to six months to live. That is not true. It is very unfair to me. Okay. 
Why do you think this is going on and when did it start? You said he used to be everybody's favorite, life of the party, fun guy. Absolutely. Was. When did it switch and why? I think it switched probably in 97, 90, maybe 96. And I don't really know why it switched. My father passed away in 97. You know, Carl had a back injury, started taking pain medications. And first it was uh, Xanax, and he started taking pain medications and stuff. He became a different person. You've oh, confronted no. him about this. What have you said to him? I've told him, I said, you know, Carl, you've got to <clears throat> stop doing the pills. You, he lies really bad about, you know, all these different illnesses that he has. And, you know, it's just kind of like you get to the point where you don't believe him anymore. You know, and I, I've just told him, I said, you're destroying your life. You're destroying your children. But what's he say about it now when you say, don't believe you, you're, this is crazy, don't believe you, you stop doing this. What's he saying? I'm not lying. I am sick. You know, I've, I've, had, kidney, I've had kidney cancer. I have, you know, <laughs> kidney failure. He told us six years ago that he, had, he was in renal failure. And my husband's like, well, what about dialysis? Oh, hell, I'm not taking that. I'm not, I'm not doing that. Well... When we say that he's used his dying language, this catastrophic language, here's some of the language that have come out in text. He says, and these are quotes, four heart attacks in four days, pray for me, I love you. This is like, I'm on my way out, yeah. pray for me, I, I love you. Next, quote, maybe the last time you talk to me, I love you. Quote, I'm going to die. Quote, I have a 5% chance of keeping my leg. Quote, I'm in the hospital with a very bad blood infection. Quote, I'm sorry for all I've done wrong to you. Quote, I'm scared of bottoming out in my sleep. I mean, just all of these, like, I'm, adios. Oh, I'm out. He's pitiful. He's got that rolled <clears throat> down. How do you respond? You've gotten some of these. Some of these are to you, not all. Some, how do you respond? A lot of the times I don't respond to him. I just kind of keep it to myself. He, it's hard to respond to him because when you try to question him about it, he just tells you, well, go ask the doctor. But then when you tell him you have <clears throat> talked to the doctor and the doctor said that's not true, he'll tell you, well, they're a liar. Well, my theory is people don't do things in a pattern, in repetition, without some kind of payoff. You don't do it unless you get something out of it. Right. Okay, it, it, all of us, everybody, we, anything we do in repetition, we do it for a payoff. What is his? Attention is one of the things that he does, but he also does it because he's hoping that you'll feel so sorry for him that you'll give him money. Well, you then know, that's his payoff. That's his payoff. Sympathy. <laughs> Sympathy. Money. Is that why he puts these things up on Facebook? He, he puts these posts up on Facebook. If he, he hit his head, I guess, and he's got a picture with the grandkids there and his leg scuffed up. Um, he puts these up on Facebook for everybody to see. Like, Hoping that everybody will just feel, feel sorry, sorry yeah, and call him me. and say, yeah. oh, Carl, what can I do for you? He's actually gone so far as asking for money, right? Yes, sir. Because January 6th, I mean, just we're talking not long ago, I went to the doctor today and he said my liver was gone. And I can't expect to live much longer. If you can help with donations for my medication, please send. Please help if you can. My life depends on it. Do people send money? No. No. <laughs> no. I used to give him money. That's the thing. That's the reason he's putting these kind of things up is I cut him off about seven years ago. And but now he's it, begging for everyone. No, no one's going to send him money. No one believes him. You say he just flat out told you that he had liver cancer and lymph node cancer, right? Yes. He didn't say, I might have, maybe, nope. sort of, it's a possibility, hope it don't. He hasn't, he hasn't. He just said, I have liver cancer and lymph node cancer. And I have three, six months to live. Right. And that was 12 months ago. <laughs> Carl is here, I, I hope. <laughs> um, so, coming up, he told his family he has lung cancer, liver cancer, lymph node cancer, uh, kidney and bladder cancer. He had four heart attacks within four days just this month. So if miracles happen, he's gonna walk out here and we're gonna hear what he has to say after the break.
my health is failing due to my heart, my liver is shot. My doctor told me that he's never seen anyone take the amount of insulin that I take every day. I am in a dark place. My daughters say that they have forgiven me, but they haven't. And later, which doctor told you you only had a 5% chance of saving your leg? It was the um, vascular surgeon. As you beat the odds with your foot. Right. It's always a new illness. My dad has told me that he has liver cancer, lymph node cancer, and kidney failure. None of that is true. I think my dad is claiming to have all these illnesses for attention. Coming all the way here for the Dr. Phil show is my ultimatum for my father. If he doesn't change after this, I just, I will have to write him off. I can't do it anymore. Well, Hillary says her father, Carl, is the greatest con artist ever lived. She says he has been faking illnesses for 18 years and his health issues have cost her a personal life. But Carl says his long list of health issues are real and he hates being a burden to the family. Take a look. My family is broken apart because of bad decisions that I've made over the past several years. I was a serious addict for 15 years. I mean, it was just chaos. Currently, I'm not using pain medication or muscle relaxers. My health is failing due to my heart, my liver is shot. Two weeks ago, I was experiencing difficulty in breathing and chest pains, which is a textbook sign of a heart attack. I had four stents put in my heart. I am also a diabetic. I take 380 units of insulin, which is approximately nine or 10 shots a day. My doctor told me that he's never seen anyone take the amount of insulin that I take every day. I check my blood sugar with a meter approximately 10 to 12 times a day. I have been in renal failure a couple of times because of my kidneys. I have to insert a catheter inside myself seven to eight times a day. It's tremendously uncomfortable. I've called 911 in the last year, probably seven times. I am in a dark place. A couple of my family members are not currently speaking to me. My daughters hold hard feelings toward me. They say that they have forgiven me, but they haven't. Well, Carl, I'm glad you're here. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling okay. Uh-huh. Are you a con man? No, sir. Are you conning your family? Are you conning people on the internet when you go on there and say, I'm dying, I need money for medication? I've never put on there that I needed money for medication. I just read this, January 6, 2018. I went to the doctor today and he said my liver was gone. Right. I can't expect to live much longer. If you can help with donations for my medication, please send. Please help if you can. My life depends on it. Well, I was looking for a place that would help me with my medication. With well, my... now, wait a minute. I just said, are you kind of people when you go on the Internet I'm... and say, can you give me money for my medication? And you I'm... said, I've never gone on there and said, give me money for well, my I medication. I forgot about that. I didn't even remember that. <laughs> I didn't. But as far as being a con man, no, I'm not. I actually do not have the money for the medication. Okay, so your liver's gone. My liver is shot. How's your heart? My heart is um, very unpredictable. I mean, I don't know when chest pains are going to come on to where you know I have to take nitroglycerin, or or if I start getting diaphoretic, or you know, and having chest pains and I have to call for the ambulance. They think that you claim illness and sickness when you really don't have it? I usually don't call anybody and tell them when I go to the hospital. You said your doctor said he's never seen anybody take as much insulin as you. That's exactly what now, he told me. I'm a me. diabetic. Yeah. Has he ever had a diabetic that drank 12 Pepsis a day? I have no idea. He just told me that in his whole career, he's never seen anyone take 380 uh, units of insulin Did in a day. Did you tell him you were drinking 12 cans of sugar a day? Um, well, I didn't tell him that I was drinking. I told him, well, I did tell him my, my uh, diet's not, you know, where it's supposed to be. And I've cut way back. Sometimes I drink 24 in a day. And, and you smoke? Since, and since, yeah, I do smoke. Did you tell your daughter that you, you had cancer? That's, yeah, I told her what the emergency room doctors had told me that they'd seen on the MRI or you know, CAT scan 
and they wanted me to follow up with an oncologist, and I never did. What did he tell you? He told me he had lymph node cancer and liver cancer. That's what they told me, right? Okay. That's what his suspicions were that I had. That's what I. Well, had. That is what you told her. Suspicions. Well, that's what he told me that, in his opinion, that's what I had. Uh, and then you didn't check it out? No, I didn't check it out because I didn't. I didn't want to know. You who say you've been to the ER and called 911 more than people call Domino's Pizza. And you get somebody to tell you that you've got cancer and you don't even follow up on it? I know I didn't because I didn't care. How many times have you been to the doctor or the ER since then? Well, that would be for preventative. Uh, I mean, as far as if I'm having a heart attack right then or if I'm having severe chest pains, um, then I, I know that I need to get something done to stop the chest pains. Did you, did you mention to them, by the way, you should know that I have liver and lymph node cancer? No, I didn't. Does that seem reasonable? No, it doesn't seem, none of this seems reasonable. None of it does. Okay, we found something we agree on. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. All right, all right. Okay, up next, Carl's other daughter, Heather, says her dad told her he only had six to 12 months to live and a 5% chance of keeping his leg. She says she is sick of his lies. We'll meet her when we come back. That hospital out there scares me. We have the records, you've been there twice a day. What were the reasons I was there, do you remember? I'm glad you asked. Thank you. We're just talking about 17 and 18. And later, you don't have cancer, right? As far as I know. You didn't have four heart attacks in four days in a row. When you were working as a firefighter and EMT, what would you have said? I would jump on somebody's ass for doing the same thing. My dad does put me through hell with things that he does. My dad has cancer one week and the next week he has three heart attacks. My dad has claimed that he's had 100 heart attacks in a year. I don't think he's ever had one real heart attack. I think he's just full of crap. I do not want him in my life right now. Well, that was Carl's other daughter, Heather, who also says she's at a breaking point with her father, who she says fakes illnesses, including cancer. Thank you for joining us. I, I know this is very frustrating to you. Now, Melody is Heather and Hillary's older sister who wrote into the show about what she calls her father's extreme Munchausen. She's joining us on Polycom today. You've been listening along, right, Melody? Yes. What's your answer to the why? I, I don't know. I don't understand. First off, do you think that you're maybe not as sick as you sometimes think you are? I do feel that way, yeah. That sometimes I'm not. Or I don't know if it's that or desperation that maybe all the stuff that's been told to me from these different doctors. Uh huh. Um, I don't know who's telling me, you know, the exact straight truth. Which doctor told you you only had a 5% chance of saving your leg? It was, oh, that was the um, vascular surgeon. He was apparently wrong, right? Well, I mean, no, I, I don't think he's wrong as far as the circulation into my foot and my leg. I, I don't. I you don't were just, think... you fell into 5%. You, you kept your foot. Yeah, I did. So far, yeah. Which doctor was it that said you had 6 to 12 months to live? Was the, the doctors that was um, in the yard ER that said that if I if the lymph node and if it was the liver cancer, then you know you you're not looking at long at all. Oh, so he actually told you what he thought you had and how long you had to live. Exactly. Sure did. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, that's all I know to tell you is, is what... Well, is this guy know, like and, and, 12 years old? What, no, but you know... Because I can't find an oncologist... I cannot find a certified oncologist that will tell a patient that they've got six or 12 months to live. But yet, you've got an ER doctor who does not do the, the scans or, or determine he didn't tell you what type of cancer, what stage of cancer. What, he just said, I think you've got 
liver and lymph node cancer, and you got six to 12 months to live. Well, uh, all I can tell you is what the man told me. You said he had four, stage four cancer and also. So how would you know I what stage know, you had? I did not never say that. Yes, I, don't, I don't recall ever saying that. Well, and when was this, by the way? Um, about a year, not even a year ago. Well, it might have been a year ago. Yeah, it was a little over a year ago. Yeah. Which would make him wrong. Uh, yeah, of course. Because you beat the odds, you, you, beat, you beat 12 months with your foot. Right. <laughs> right. And by the way, I have that ER record, and he did not write that down. He didn't. It is not in there. Well, There's not one thing in that record about them telling you anything about cancer. Well, you know, I mean, I've told, I think I've told my kids that that's, this, that hospital out there scares me. And it does. <laughs> <laughs> and it does. Is you this the one you go to twice a day sometimes? Twice a day? No, I've never been there twice a day. Twice. We have the records. You've been there twice a day. I've been there twice. For different day. symptoms. Okay. And they also did not say anything about cancer diagnosis. Okay, but what were the reasons I was there? Do you remember? Well, actually, I'm glad you asked. Thank you. <laughs> because here are the things that you have claimed when you have gone in liver and lymph node cancer, there is no record, no chemo, no radiation. No. No chemo, no radiation. You have said you have had bladder cancer. There is no record anywhere that you have ever been diagnosed with bladder cancer. You've never had any chemo or radiation treatment for bladder cancer. You have said you had kidney cancer. There is no record. You have had no chemo. You have had no radiation for that. You have said you had lung cancer. There is no record, and your lungs actually are clear. Right. You said you have had four heart attacks in four days. There is no record of you having a heart attack, and the day you said you had that, you walked home. Four heart attacks. From the hospital where you had the heart attack. Okay. And you, you said you had triple bypass surgery? No. I never had bypass surgery. No, you, you haven't. And <laughs> there's no record of it. You have, your heart is normal. Okay. Broken bones. We're just talking about 17 and 18 now. I, this is just last year and this year so far. Broken bones, no. Mild stroke, no. Kidney failure, no. Severe leg infection. There was an ultrasound. It was negative, no amputation. Six to 12 months to live. Well, you just didn't die. Okay. I mean, <laughs> as comical as it might sound, uh, the broken bones, I broke both my legs and both my ankles at the same time. In 14. That was in 2014, in, not in 17, 18. No, I didn't. I never said it was in 17 or 18. Yes, I never you did. Said, Well, there I aren't did, versions of I, the truth, and when you're just making things up, it's hard to remember when you said what to who. I understand that, too. Coming up, Terry says Carl just has no dignity and doctor shops for prescriptions. Is Carl really sick here? We'll talk about that when we come back. I feel that my dad is dangerous. I believe that he could kill me. He went around the house with a butcher knife and cut all the phone lines. It was one of the scariest nights. Closed captioning provided by... I feel that my dad is dangerous. I believe that he could kill me. About 16 years ago, my dad was on Xanax. He went around the house with a butcher knife and cut all the phone lines, told me that no one was making it out of the house alive. I slammed the bedroom door, pushed the bed and the dresser in front of it, lifted the window, and then I jumped out and ran down the street to call 911. It was one of the scariest nights that I've ever experienced. My dad is seriously disturbed and needs a lot of help. 
they are being harassed and beleaguered and are really just worn out. I understand. They're, they're I just know, worn out from this. I know that. I and you say you've had four heart attacks. You've, you've not. You say your leg's going to be amputated. It isn't. You say you have cancer. You don't. You, you should be very happy about that. But the question is, why are you saying all of these things about your health when they're not true? And I'm concerned for two reasons. One, why you're so fixated on that. And two, the day will come when you really do have something wrong and you're kind of like the little boy who cried wolf I, and nobody that. takes you serious because uh, you've you said it so many times you've lost credibility and I don't I don't want that to happen. But look, forget about them, forget about everything. Let's just let's just talk here you and me. For most of your life you've been a stud, man. You've been a firefighting EMT. You, you're the guy that ran into the burning building. You have been in the trenches. You have saved lives, and I thank you for your service. I truly do. And you're not finished, and you're not going to continue down the road you're going on because I'm not going to let you do it. Thank you. Now, I'm just telling you, just one old country boy to another, you need to pull your head out of your ass and listen to me. You're not going to do what you're doing here. You're better than this. You're better than this. And you know, and deep down inside, I know I am, but there's something, I don't know what type of, um, if it's a physiological effect, that something's got a hold to me that I just can't shake, and I don't know how to do it. Are you and doing I, too much drugs? No, are, are, I'm, are, are, no, no seriously, no, 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 no. don't okay. answer till you think about this. I, it doesn't matter if you've got a prescription for it or not. Have you gotten reliant on these drugs and they've taken away your drive? Have they taken away your, your focus? I mean, and listen, that happens to the best of people. It doesn't mean it does. that you're some kind of gutter rat drug addict. You get on these prescriptions, we have lost a moral compass with these opioids and painkillers and giving these to people, and it sneaks up on them. It doesn't mean you're a bad person. It just means if you've gotten over-medicated and it's taken away your focus and your drive, you got to reach out for help. you got to throw a hand up and let somebody help you. Just tell me what's going on. Well, I'm here to help you. I understand that, and I appreciate that. I've looked at your medical records. And on, let me tell you what they're saying. On April 5th, 16, comments from the RN. Taking benzos and opiates currently does not believe he is abusing them. 9-14-17, they saw him and felt he was displaying drug-seeking behavior, which he did to me as well. 91417 to 91617 he is also asking for morphine iv by name for leg pain saying that percocet is not helping 101117 additional history patient has been seen two other times in this emergency department this week and has not complained of similar symptoms this is all considered drug-seeking, pill-seeking, narcotic-seeking behavior. I understand that. When we come back, Carl blames a tragic car accident 20 years ago for starting his downward spiral, and I could certainly understand why. We're going to find out why his daughters have a different story, though, when we come back. Closed captioning provided by... Carl's a totally different person when he's doing drugs. He and I got into a fight at the hospital when my mother was passing away. First time I've ever cussed him out while she was dying. He was down in the emergency room getting pain pills. That's disgusting. I'm not gonna have that in my life anymore. 
Well, Terry and her nieces have all been shaken to the core by Carl's erratic behavior, but there's a tragic event from the past that haunts this entire family. Take a look. Carl's daughter Jessica got killed in a car accident about a week after she turned 16. Heather was in the car with him. I remember every detail like it was yesterday. We were T-boned on the driver's side where my sister was. I had a broken pelvis. Jessica lived until about 4 o'clock the following morning. That hit me extremely hard. I was just inconsolable. When my daughter passed away, I started taking pain medication much more than I needed it. His drug progression really just skyrocketed. It pushed him to where he didn't care if he lived or not. I was suffering from extreme grief. I covered it up with taking the pain pills. That was a terrible choice I made, and it was one that stuck with me for 16 years. I'm very sorry for your loss. I'm very sorry for your loss. I lost one of my kids that have taken me to the dump. I, 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 you won't hear me say I know how you feel. You say after the accident, your pain pill use got out of hand, and you, and you say, you know it did. You said oh, it did. I know it did, yeah. You can't tell me that you don't see that your reactions here, that your perceptions here, that your involvement here is irrational. I know, I, exactly. I'm, I agree with you 100%. This is not who you are. If, if you had, if you had, when, when you were working as a firefighter and EMT and you had you on your route, your area, that you were picking up two and three times a week, sometimes twice a day, taken to the ER time and time and time again, what would you have said? You pick somebody up, you brought them back, and nothing wrong with him. Pick them up, bring them back, nothing wrong with him. Pick them up, bring them back, nothing wrong with him. You'd have been said, hey, come on, stop wasting resources here. Right. And you I've, wouldn't I've have put done, up with that. I've done the same thing in the, in the field. I, you know, I would, I would jump on somebody's ass for doing the same thing. But you recognize you don't have cancer, right? Yeah. I yeah, you know you don't. I recognize that I don't have as cancer. As far as I know, I'm just telling you now, I don't think I have it now. You have no evidence that you have cancer? None. You didn't have four heart attacks in four days in a row. I mean, you, no. you, 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 you are not, all of this stuff I've, I've listed up here, you just don't have. You've just built this up in your mind and there's a reason for it. And you've got to figure out what that reason is. And I'm willing to help you do this, and I know how to go about this if you're willing to grab on and do this. Yes, that's why I'm here. All right, coming up, Hillary says her dad uses her for rides, money, food, and cigarettes. And will even lie that he's been robbed of all of his groceries. You say, I haven't eaten in 20 days. No, I don't. Tell me that. You have said that. Twenty days. No, that's true. Not true. We'll talk about that next. My sister Hillary is still involved with my dad on a day-to-day -day basis. It does worry me. He does manipulate Hillary for attention, for money. Everyone else basically is done with Carl, except for Hillary. And Hillary has a big heart, and she calls me crying. Aunt Terry, I don't know what to do. He says he's dying. My dad preys upon my kindness. He uses it to his advantage. It is very unfair to me. Is there any doubt in y'all's mind that he is either intentionally or unintentionally misperceiving his situation? He's not seeing this clearly. I mean, whether you think he's making it up for manipulative purposes, he's just lying and, and all, or not, you recognize that he's not seeing this straight. Oh, yes. I can't diagnose him here. That would be improper for me to do because I would have to go through a whole diagnostic process. But I can tell you what would be on my short list of considerations. There would be four possibilities, two of them that would be real high on the list. One's just simple malingering. 
right? Um, and simple malingering is just what it sounds like. Uh, it's the intentional reporting of fabricated symptoms motivated by a clearly recognizable goal, like money or avoiding responsibilities or obtaining drugs or whatever. This is when they just make stuff up, just totally fabricate something for some kind of gain. Another possibility is somatic symptom disorder. And that is abnormal thoughts, feelings and behaviors in response to perceived physical symptoms even when there is evidence to the contrary. They perceive it, even when there's evidence to the contrary. If you have cancer, well, you, actually, you don't. You, I've had a heart attack. Well, your heart's fine. What you have to be willing to do is say, I'm not going to be part of the conversation. I'm not going to be part of the dialogue. I'm not, I'm not going to respond. You just don't have to respond. Just, you know, if you, if you don't react, then you don't reinforce. And if you don't reinforce, then here's what you can expect. It'll get worse. It's called the extinction effect. You know, when he's done something and he gets a reaction, and he does something, he gets a reaction, does something, he gets a reaction, and all of a sudden he doesn't, you go, oh, well, I just guess I just need to do more. I just need to say it louder. And so it'll go up, 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 and then he goes, well, oh, well, I guess I'm not going to get a reaction, and then it'll stop. You, you need to take care of yourselves. And I'm going to tell you why that's okay. Because whatever's going on here is way above your skill set. You're not trained for this. You don't have the sensitivities, the understanding to deal with this. So you, you, couldn't, you couldn't fix it if you want to, but I'm going to help him with this. Okay, so you've got to give yourself permission to say, I'm going to let others handle this. So think about that. When we come back, I'm going to talk about a plan to get him on the right track, which helps his whole family move forward. We'll be right back. Closed captioning provided by... There's three things that I want you to do for me, okay? Okay. Number one, I want to find out where you really are. Uh, I want to send you to a real diagnostic team. And I want you to agree to let them report back to me. And I'm talking in detail what's going on with you. I want to send you to the PNP Center in Dallas, Texas. And I want them to do a full evaluation of everything about you, which would seem to be playing into your preoccupation with this, but I want to get a baseline of where you are. Number two, I want to get you engaged with a therapist. And I, I can do this, you have a computer, right? I can do this through Doctor On Demand. And Doctor On Demand is a company that I have with my son Jay. And, and it's an app you can download on your computer and you can do it from anywhere you are, whether it's home or on the road or wherever. You can come face to face with a board certified and licensed therapist that can work with you from the privacy of your own home and work through these issues. And I'm going to hand pick this person and I'm going to show them this whole exchange that we've had and give them the whole file that I have to start working with you. Then third, I'm going to get you a trainer and you're going to start working on your health instead of your sickness. You're going to start working on getting yourself, you're going to start working on getting yourself in shape. So what do you think about that plan? I think that's an excellent plan. And I, right. that's something I'm, I don't want to do. All right. You got to do it. All right. 
If you at home want to have your own Doctor On Demand, go to Google Play Store or iTunes App Store and you can download the Doctor On Demand app. It truly is great. Uh, I want to thank all of my guests today and a special thanks to Dr. Frank Lawless at the PNP Center where we're going to get a good baseline on him. For more information about today's show, you can log on to drphil.com. Tell us what you think on Facebook and Twitter, and you're going to let us know how things go as we move forward, right? Yes, sir. Does it sound like a plan to you guys? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I also want to offer some help to you because you have carried a burden here, and I really think it's kept you from um, attending to yourselves about your loss. and. Uh, grief is not a mental illness, but it is a process. And uh, to the extent that you feel like you need it, I want to make that available to you as well. Fair enough? Yes, sir. Thank okay. you. Right. Thank you. We'll see you next time. <laughs>